Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl. In this problem, we're asked to find the limit of a vector-valued function, if that limit exists. Well, when you take the limit of a vector-valued function, you take the limit of each of the individual components. So I can rewrite this limit as the limit as t approaches 0 of t squared and then take that limit and multiply it by vector i. And in a similar way, the limit as t approaches 0 of 3t times vector j plus the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine t all over t times my vector k. Okay, now when I go to evaluate each of these individual limits, I notice that as t approaches 0, t squared also goes to 0. So this will be 0 times i. My second limit, as t approaches 0, 3t also approaches 0. So this is 0 times j. This last component is more complicated. As t approaches 0, the cosine of 0 gets close to 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0, but we're also dividing by 0. This is what's called an indeterminate form. So you can't just do a direct substitution for the limit. However, if you recall by the squeeze theorem, this limit equals 0. So I can just write 0 times vector k. But let's say for a minute that you don't remember that fact. Let's go ahead and calculate that. So I'm going to do a little side work, and I'm going to say that the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine t over t. And I'm going to try to evaluate that. Now again, this is an indeterminate form. So I'm going to have to find a way of rewriting that expression. The way I'm going to do that is multiply my expression by 1. That way, nothing has changed. So the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine t all over t times 1. Now what form do I want 1 to take? I'm going to use 1 plus cosine of t all over 1 plus cosine of t. My limit then becomes the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine t times the quantity 1 plus cosine t all over t times the quantity 1 plus cosine t. Now I'm going to go ahead and use FOIL in the numerator. And I've got the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine squared t all over t times the quantity 1 plus cosine t. Now if you want to try to do a direct substitution at this point, you can, but you're still going to get 0 over 0. So I'm not ready to do that yet. Well, 1 minus cosine squared t I know is sine squared t by the Pythagorean theorem. So I'll rewrite this as the limit as t approaches 0 of sine squared t all over t times the quantity 1 plus cosine t. And I also notice that sine squared t could be written as sine t times sine t. So let me do that as well. Limit as t approaches 0 of the sine of t times the sine of t all over t times the quantity 1 plus cosine t. Now, if you remember the squeeze theorem, one of the results that we discovered was that as t approaches 0, the sine of t over t approaches the value 1. And as t approaches 0, sine of t goes to 0. And 1 plus cosine of t is going to go to 2. This piece is going to 2. So what do I have? In the numerator, I have 1 times 0 all over 2, which leads to 0 over 2 or 0. So now 
I've shown you why this limit is really just a zero. So I have zero times my vector k. This whole thing is just the zero vector. I hope that was helpful. Thanks.